All right. Well, that was uh, several movies in between since my last one, but we are back to Godzilla. So, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. Now, I mentioned in an earlier review, this is one of the ones that I have that is awkwardly dubbed. Well, it's the best I could work with since uh, finding this individual collection runs somewhere around $100 for the dubbed or subbed right now. So, you know, I'll just hang on to this one. Okay. So, and then King Ghidorah makes a return, given the uh, box office fall off from Biollante. They decided to, to decided to go with a monster that they knew broad in numbers. King Ghidorah was their winner. They also decided to alter the tone a little bit. The other ones had been a bit uh, darker. This one lightens up a little bit and definitely leans heavily into sci-fi fantasy camp. Oh boy, does it. It still is nowhere near as goofy as anything in the Showa era, but wow. Okay, so. First off, uh, well, where do I even start with this one? Time travel's involved, so that makes it always difficult to figure out where to start. Well, um... Okay, so first off, uh, there's some strange happenings, which, uh... uh some sightings of a flying saucer. We'll just start there. There's a bunch of sightings of a UFO. However, eventually the UFO uh, lands and out pop, well, people. People who claim to, well, be from Earth. Just from the 23rd century. So, they are come to alert us that, uh, Godzilla is going to destroy Japan, as well as uh, ravage the world. Uh-oh. So, um, if uh, nothing is done, Godzilla's going to pose a problem, so, well, we have to do something about Godzilla. So, they uh, know, then, uh, know a lot of this because uh, a book was written in this time period, and one of the authors of that book is one of our main characters, who seems to have a special uh, then, uh, connection to the Japanese girl from the future. So there's a couple people, one of them's an android, and a few other are then one Japanese girl and some white people. They've all come from the future to, well, solve this little problem and stop Godzilla from uh, destroying Japan. Sounds all well and good. Their plan is to go back in time and stop Godzilla from ever being created. Okay, so they've figured out which island Godzilla was on as a dinosaur that I guess had woken up and got subjected to, well, a bomb. So, however, there's then they get some this information confirmed by a soldier who was there on that island and is knows for sure that that dinosaur was well Godzilla. So, back in time they go, and that's when things start getting a little suspicious. Now the then the Futurians, I guess, uh, bring three weird little pets that uh, they call Dorax, which look like little bats with troll doll heads. Anyway, they're, three of those are brought along just to kind of keep them company, I guess. Sure. But uh, when they uh, go back and uh, essentially they use the technology on the spaceship to move God, uh, the Godzilla Saurus off the island to prevent it from getting, well, having its nuclear awakening. Good plan, good plan. However, they leave the three Dorats behind, which when we get to the future, well, they have now fused into one giant monster, King Ghidorah. A little bit of a different origin from what we had before with him being a space demon. No, now he is a remote-controlled uh, monster. Literally, they're the, he's being pretty much controlled by the Futurians. Uh-oh. Turns out uh, they are not here to save Japan. They're here to destroy it because in the future, Japan becomes such a, uh, a technological superpower, the rest of the world can't compete. Uh, the Japanese lady didn't realize uh, what, how far they were going to go. They thought they were just trying to uh, level the playing field a little bit. But no, no, they didn't uh, expect a, the Japan to be utterly wiped out or them to try to rule over it, it in the present. Well, uh-oh. So things look bad. And they've been given the present so long to surrender. However, our the Japanese girl from the future 
then, along with the help of Miki, she's still hanging around, uh, or know that, uh, then that this can't stand, and she begins working to try to, well, she ro reprograms the, the robot to try to help out, and essentially they are doing what they can to sneak in and sabotage the King Ghidorah's controls. But, Miki is, uh, like, Godzilla's still here. And up he gets, because there's so much nuclear radiation, uh, radiation stored around that was bound to eventually uh, create a new Godzilla. As this one, essentially, there was a submarine, a nuclear submarine that was lost in the area where they moved him. Uh-oh, now, now Godzilla's back. In fact, he actually has more radioactive than before, so he's dar a much darker color in skin and is now much more dangerous. And uh, we go from there. So, however, after King Ghidorah is defeated and the Futurians are, well, no longer a problem, the other problem is now, well, Godzilla is even more worse than before. And it's going to pretty much destroy Tokyo anyway. Well, our future lady returns to the future, fixes up King Ghidorah there, and comes back with Mecha King Ghidorah and has a giant robot uh, fight with Godzilla. A lot going on in this one. Very convoluted. Oh, and also she is descended from the guy who wrote the Godzilla book, despite them having this weird chemistry that almost could have been romantic. So that was a weird little twist here that, that was actually his, like, Grand, great granddaughter or something awkward um yeah uh there's nothing i'm missing anything here uh monster effects are again toho wears and this is now 91 so 90s toho the king of dora looks great they kind of made him a little more, more sleek looking they pretty much gave him spikes instead of his like hair that he had before I'm kind of disappointed that they changed his roar as much as they did. Yeah, they made it sound more menacing, but they... I miss the high-pitched cackle that he had before. Well, but, oh well. Minor nitpick. The Mecha King Ghidorah battle suit was kind of cool. I, I, did, I was digging on that. Uh, I think that's about all I have on this one. Um, just trying to remember which order things happen, and uh, that's... Okay, yep, that's not telling another Godzilla film. Okay, uh, this one I'm going to give five MacGuffins to. It's, the effects are good, and the, the characters are actually pretty decent, but the overly complex and cheesy plot definitely got makes and breaks this one simultaneously. So, that's all well, we we're going to say on it, isn't it? Yeah? You agree? All right, well, that's all for the moment, Void. Catch you in a minute.